Alex, what is your view of artificial intelligence, AI, consciousness? It's obviously in the public square, but it is to me a, a very deep probe of the nature of consciousness itself. M much of the discussion that you see today says that it's not a question of, of if AI will become conscious, but when and what are the consequences of it. I, I want to start back earlier. Um, why do people say AI consciousness is in principle possible? I think many AI devotees conflate simulation with instantiation. Uh, that's, that's very problematic. The idea that if something behaves as if something else, that you can equate both things. And that's a, that's a flaw, a conceptual flaw that has happened many times. Now it happens for a very obvious reason, because these algorithms are, are truly impressive to us. I, I like to think of them as, as kind of mirrors, I'm not sure if dark mirrors, but mirrors. And so, and so it creates this illusion that you, it's, it's kind of behaviorism on steroids in a way. Like we, we can make these things be as good as, therefore we'll just say they're the same thing. Another problem that I see with conceptual problem with AI is sometimes people conflate intelligence with consciousness. Mm -hmm. And they tend to think that because something, in this case an algorithm, is can solve problems and can do it in a way that's spectacular, that therefore it must have some sort of sentience. One more thing I would add, um, maybe borrowing it from, from Mike Levin, he has warned me, he said, well, look, um, Alex, we don't really know what things can um, embody consciousness in the world because we, we've been constantly surprised, not just with thinking that humans, some illusionists think that humans don't, <laughs> others think that yes, humans do, but then animals don't, then others say, no, 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 you can go down, down or <laughs> in another branch of the tree of, of animals and, and decide that these animals are, and the same with plants, there's a whole struggle in the field of plant cognition, even fungi. So what I'm trying to say is that, yes, we really don't know um, which entities may be able to host consciousness. But in the case of AI, there's a clear element of hype. And also, I would say that artificial intelligence AI is also some sort of algorithmic invasion that kind of as a shockwave is, is making the consciousness studies community just hurry up and speed up and think, all right, what, what about these things now? So maybe that's a good, that's a good thing, but th there's a lot of confusion, I would say, about what these algorithms can really do, or even more importantly, what these algorithms really are. I don't think they're en conscious entities, and I doubt they will be, but, but maybe I'm wrong. The, the, I don't think there's any doubt that right now that no AI really is conscious. A few people say it is, but, but nobody would agree with that. It can pass the so-called Turing test because they will appear as if they are conscious and, and, and astute observers will not be able to tell the difference. But that has really no bearing on whether there's inner, uh, an inner sense. So I think we can put that aside. Um, but the critical question is, uh, in principle, in po in, not that it can be done in a short period of time, but in principle, given 100,000 years of technology exponentially growing, um, is it possible, in principle, to have, to have an inner sense, that AI will have an inner sense? I don't think so. And why not? Because there's something about what it is like to be human and what it is like to be an organism. Because I'm more of an organicist uh -huh. than a mechanicist. I think nature is, 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 is a great organism made of smaller organisms. And the artificial intelligence program seems to continue along the route of the, the, the universe as, as some sort of mechanics put together. And so I don't see how the spark of life and mind, if I can put it in this way, can emerge from, from that program. And, and also I see a rather evil agenda also behind, behind that when people like Ray Kurzweil uh, expose their, their transhumanism on steroids, which, is, which sounds like a, oh, as, as what it is, it's an attack on, 
on nature and the limitations um, that nature po yeah. imposes on our own bodies. Yeah. I may agree or not agree with what you're saying, but, but I would say it's not relevant to whether it's in principle. The fact that it's good or bad has no relevance on whether it will happen or not. Uh, you, and and you shouldn't, we shouldn't conflate the two. I mean, it, it, it could be bad that it happens, but it could be real. Yes, but I think scientists have a responsibility too, like in the Manhattan Project, not just to work towards making it happen or not, but also discussing whether that's uh, ethically or morally a, a good thing. I agree, they, these are separate, separate issues, issues yeah. but if we separate them too much, they end, up, they end up creating a lot of harm. So that's why this is also not just a, a curse, but also a blessing, because it forces consciousness researchers to speed up their thinking as to what could be conscious, and that really requires having a theory not just some guesses, and also it requires political actors um, to get involved in seeing how we regulate those things. So once more, is a, a vibrant ecosystem that's hard to navigate.